Let us look at this question. This question appeared in IAS 2021 paper. Explain how gender sensitive human development index can be constructed. Uh, this is useful even for those who are preparing for Indian economic services. Pause the video, try to write an answer yourself and then come back. This is uh, this has to be written for around 150 words. <coughs> so pause the video, try to do it yourself first. Explain how gender sensitive human development index can be constructed. So gender sensitive human development index is gender development index. Gender development index is measuring the differences in the achievements for male and female separately along the three main dimensions in which uh, uh, your human development index is also calculated. That is your education levels, health measured by life expectancy, and standard of living. Basically, your income measure or command over resources. Huh? So first of all, the human development index for both males and females, they are calculated separately. And then the gender development index is calculated as the ratio of as the ratio of female HDI to male HDI. That is what it is. Uh, so let me write that. So if this ratio is equal to one, if this ratio, that is ratio of female HDI to male HDI is equal to one, you say that the situation is balanced as far as human development is concerned between the two genders. And if this ratio is close towards zero, then you say that the situation is unbalanced as far as genders are concerned, right? So the more unbalanced, in case if the ratio is close towards zero, the more unbalanced the HDI results are between men and women, right? So that's what I've said, that GDI is going to measure the differences in male and female achievements in three basic dimensions, your health, education, command over resources, and you find out the HDI for female, you find out the HDI for male, and this is the way this new measure of HDI is being calculated after 2010. That is the geometric mean of these three uh, dimensions, health, education, and income. Uh, and you find this ratio, HDI for females upon HDI for males. So if it is equal, then this ratio is equal, to one, in that case, the situation is balanced between male and female. If this is close to zero, means HDI for females is very low while HDI for males is high, then this ratio is going to be smaller or closer towards zero. In that case, it is going to be unbalanced. That's what it is. And then what you do is that you get the gender disaggregated data for each of the three dimensions for education for health, for income. So for education, there are two sub-dimensions, <clears throat> which is the expected years of schooling and mean years of schooling. And whenever you calculate the dimension, you, um, whenever you calculate this index, you need to calculate the dimension index. For education also dimension index has been created. For health also dimension index has been created for income also dimension index has been created. So the way you calculate the dimension index is your uh, actual value minus minimum value upon maximum value minus minimum value. Uh, so for life, for uh, this guy, your expected years of schooling, uh, the minimum value is going to be what? Zero. Maximum value is I think fifth, uh, 18. And the mean years of schooling is that minimum value is going to be what zero and the maximum value is assumed to be 15. That is the mean years of schooling. So you're expected that at max you will have 18 years of schooling. Mean could be a little lesser because some people might drop out early in some. Uh, so this way. And then you calculate this index. So let me write about this. So what I said. You calculate the dimension index, which is the actual value minus minimum value upon maximum value minus minimum value. So for Female and male <clears throat> expected years of schooling. I mean, the minimum value is taken to be zero. Maximum value is taken to be 18. For female and male, mean years of schooling is taken to be zero. And uh, 
the maximum value is taken to be 15, right? So you get the actual value. So for example, there is any country A and you find that the expected years of schooling is a uh, little lesser than this, whatever. Uh, and uh, so you calculate this, whatever is the actual value minus minimum value, which is zero upon maximum minus minimum value. So 18 minus zero. Uh, so mean years of schooling is whatever, or, and similarly, or for, for your mean years of schooling as well. So you get the dimension index for, for, uh, for both of them. Uh, and then you take the average of these two. Then you take the average of these two. Uh, that is, uh, that is uh, uh, expected years of schooling upon 18 minus zero plus <clears throat> your, uh, this guy, mean years of schooling upon 15 minus zero. You take an average of that. <clears throat> you take an average of that separately for male and female. Separately for male and female. Uh, so first of all, you take the index. Index is going to be obtained for both the subcomponents sub and then you take the average. Then let's talk about the income part. So this is the command over economic resources, your, your, your income part. So it is measured by female and male estimated earned income. And uh, GDI is considering the income gaps in terms of the actual earned income. So how do you estimate the, uh, these earned incomes? First of all, you calculate the share of wage bill for each gender, for females separately, for males separately. So WF by WM is the ratio of female wages to male wages. EAF is nothing but the economically active female population upon WF by WM, that is the ratio of female to male wages into EAF, that is economically active female population, plus EAM, that is economically active male population. So in the entire population, not the entire population is going to be economically active. So there'll be uh, some percentage of population which is going to be working population. So this way you get the female share. So let's say female share is 45%. Then the male share is going to be 55%, one minus SF. And once you have calculated the male and the female share of the wage bill, uh, so how you can find out the estimated female earned income per capita. So you need to calculate this guy. Gross national income per capita for female for female. Uh, so you get this from, you already have the data for gross national income per capita, right? You multiply this with <clears throat> share of female wages, right? Uh, or the female share of the wage bill. Uh, and then you rescale this with PF. What is PF? PF is the female share in the population, not only economically active population, but the female share of the population. So female share of the population is number of females in the population upon the total number. Hmm. Similarly, you can calculate gross national income per capita for males, similar way. Hmm. Per capita into SM by PM into SM by PM. And PM is what? One minus PF. <clears throat> PM is what? One minus PF. Uh, so that is one thing. Fair enough. So, and how do you calculate the dimension index in this case? You calculate the dimension index in this way. So you would have the value for GNI per capita male, let's say, from here. And this 100 is the is the minimum value. You remember dimension index, na? actual minus minimum upon maximum minus minimum. So you calculate the log of this minus log of 100. This is the 
uh, actual value, minimum value, maximum value in dollars minus minimum value, right? That is the per capita. Okay, so you get the dimension index for, for income. This is one way. And the last one is for the health. Last one is health. In case of health, you find out the male and the female life expectancy separately. And, uh, but one thing which GDI is going to assume is that uh, women are going to live on an average five years longer than men. That's what they, they assume. So the minimum and the maximum values for female and male. So the minimum value is assumed to be 22.5. Uh, maximum value for female is assumed to be 87.5. Minimum value for male is 17.5. And maximum value for male is 82.5, right? So you calculate the female health index and the male health index. Uh, and the moment you have all the three dimensions for both male and female separately, you will be substituting these indices here, right? For HDI of female and HDI of male separately. The moment you have HDI for female and male, you will be finding out this ratio, which is going to tell you the uh, gender uh, development index, uh, gender development. So you can conclude by saying that it is useful. It is useful to find out where the gender gaps are uh, in achievement of male and female capabilities. And the policies could be taken up uh, in order to ensure that these gaps are closed. Right. So this is providing insights into gender disparities in the three basic dimensions and uh, policies could be taken up in order to close these gaps. So this is uh, uh, what we expect in this answer. Right. Thank you. Bitta.